Hi guys, this is Chloe and I want to ask you to imagine this scenario. You get a job as a colorist and this is a commercial. Amazing, you've been waiting for this opportunity for such a long time. The production house sends you the schedule and you realize that only one day is dedicated for color. How come? Would you have enough time to grade everything? What about feedbacks from the director during the day? It will slow you down. How can you manage to be on time then? So this little scenario is actually pretty realistic. This is the standard for commercial grading. So when I grade a commercial, my session is only one day. So how do you complete everything during the day? I am making this video to make you realize something. Tutorials that only focus on one image and use many windows and artifacts to make the still image look amazing is not realistic. On the field, we only have a limited amount of time to hit. That's why I prepared for you three tips for you to grade faster and grade better. Before we jump to the tutorial, uh, subscribe to the channel if you want more tips on color grading and uh, follow me on Instagram uh, if you want to see what's my day as a colorist. Okay, I think we are all set. Now let's jump to the tutorial. So the first tip is actually creating groups to speed up your uh, shot matching. So to match shots, there are a few strategies. Um, you can either uh, try to put all your camera log to another camera log, uh, which then like, for example, if you choose uh, the Ari log, then like uh, maybe you want to put the red into uh, Ari log and um, the black magic row into the Ari log. So then after when you interpret everything in Rec 709, it goes uh, to a similar um, log curve, like it, it comes from a similar log curve. Uh, and then like you have a similar uh, colors that come out of it. Um, I find this technique uh, useful sometimes, but uh, this is not the cleanest. Um, for me, I would prefer actually to um, transfer all my footage into uh, a wider color space. Uh, so uh, DaVinci White Gamut is very good or um, to interpret it to uh, a color space that like uh, is pretty standard, which is the ACES color space. So um, either or would make you a good base to um, start your shot matching because uh, everything would be interpreted um, in uh, within uh, the same color space and would have the same colors. We're gonna work with uh, DaVinci White Gamut. So for this, uh, you're gonna go to your project settings over here and uh, you're gonna open it and uh, the timeline color space is gonna be in DaVinci White Gamut and the output color space in uh, Rex 9 Gamma 2.4. Um, so for this, uh, we're gonna create groups to uh, group each camera together. So uh, we're just gonna uh, go to our thumbnails here and uh, we're just gonna select all the Ari. So uh, to select, uh, just hold command, Ari, Ari. So I have all my Aries and I'm gonna right click and go to uh, add into a new group. So uh, when I add into a new group, I can change the name and it's gonna be Ari. So now that I have my Ari group, uh, there's some uh, things that change over here. So over here, I'm having way more options for my note tree. Um, so I'm having an option of a group preclip, so which is like you can create a grade that's going to affect only the group, but will come uh, before the clip uh, that you are grading on. And uh, the group post clip, which is the same, but uh, after. So then like um, the grade that you are doing will come after the grade that you've done on the clip and will only affect the group. Within this, I can create a sandwich that makes sense uh, in my group and that will affect all my cameras that are Ari. So I'm just gonna go to my OFX and go to the color space transform. I'm dragging and dropping it. And I'm gonna um, just put the RE white gamut, RE log C3. And um, the color space is gonna be DaVinci white gamut. Okay, just copy and pasting because 
<laughs> I'm just a you know very lazy so I'm just copying and pasting and uh, I'm pasting it here and I'm gonna swap it and change the RE here to uh, Rec 709 and to uh, Gamma 2.4 so then like we have an output in Gamma 2.4 there's some people that um, told me, you know, like uh, last time that uh, I left the DaVinci tone mapping. Um, you can leave the DaVinci tone mapping uh, when you go in the DaVinci Y gamut, or you can just like um, uh, unselect it. Uh, it wouldn't have any effects. So to go inside the DaVinci Y gamut, either you uh, unselect the tone mapping method or uh, you put the DaVinci, it should be fine. So then like I'm having my group affected. So I have my sandwich, which is in and out. And so then like, if you see in my timeline, all my RE footages are affected. So then like we can just create the groups for uh, Blackmagic also. Uh, tuk, 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 we go to add into a new group, BM. And it's gonna be the same, you know, like, I'm just gonna go, uh, you know, group pre-clip uh, and change to uh, Blackmagic Gen 5. Yeah, Blackmagic Gen 5, this one. And uh, go to DaVinci uh, Y Intermediate, copy and paste, and go to uh, Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Okay, so now it's mapped. And so now like all my black magics are mapped, right? And uh, if you see, it kind of share the same color similarity as the RE, which then like uh, can represent a good advantage for us in the chart matching after. Okay, so this was the first tip. Um, it's nice, handy but uh, I think I have way better than actually creating groups. So what are we gonna do is just like deleting all the groups. So I'm gonna go to groups and I'm gonna delete everything. Uh, so everything came back to a uh, log, okay? And um, what I'm gonna do, because I want everything in the same color space, why not? I use uh, the DaVinci YRGB Color, Ma color Manage. <laughs> oh my God. The DaVinci YRGB Color Manage um, that you can find actually uh, in project settings. You go to project settings, go to color science and uh, click on DaVinci YRGB Color Manage. So um, we want, we are interested in this uh, tutorial to stay in the DaVinci Y gamut um, intermediate. So uh, what are we going to do is uh, going to custom and uh, for input color space, my main camera in my timeline is actually Ari because um, most of the shots of the camera that I have right now is Ari. So I'm going to uh, select Ari Love C3. And uh, I'm gonna go to DaVinci Y gamut and output color space, it's gonna be uh, Gamma 2.4. So now that I have everything, I hit save and uh, it's gonna map for me everything. If you see, and uh, the same mapping that, that we have, actually that we had, sorry. Um, I can also uh, check if I can uh, change the uh, input color management but uh, when um, DaVinci is actually sure about uh, the color management then uh, you won't have like an option to change uh, your input uh, color management so this happens most of the time when uh, you are working with RAW because you have the codec of the camera that is already displayed and um, DaVinci recognize which um, codec it is uh, but for example uh, let me just find a phone footage to show you i added a phone footage inside the timeline uh, just to show you what uh, are the options if for example uh, you um, your software didn't interpret it well uh, the input color space so um, when davinci is not so sure 
what uh, is going to appear when you're going to right click is uh, just on upper the bypass color management you're going to have input color space and in input color space you're going to have like multiple choices of color space so right now um, because it's a h265 uh, um, DaVinci has doubts on uh, which color space uh, it has to be uh, fit on first. Uh, so then like for font footage, it just like, suggests me uh, this is Rec 709 and Rec 709 scene. And uh, on this is right. Uh, but for example, let's say like this uh, footage was a ProRes and that was coming from a red uh, camera then i would go um, to uh, so i would <laughs> my god I, I bugged so i would go to red and i would go like to a red white gamut for example so i would select that so you have like a multiple uh, choice of uh, input color space if for example uh, davinci didn't interpret well the color space so now my third tip is actually um, using a tool within DaVinci Resolve that would like copy and paste automatically your grade to another timeline. Uh, so it can be very handy uh, when you have like multiple cutdowns uh, of the same commercial. So when the commercial is doing, for example, uh, the main in 30 seconds and has like multiple cutdowns of 15 seconds, but taking back uh, the clips from uh, the main commercial, so then like um, this, this uh, tool can be very handy because sometimes you can uh, lose some uh, time um, just copy and pasting manually. So um, I'm in my uh, graded timeline and so um, I'm just going to go to uh, cut down and you can see this is um, actually uh, the same clips but not in the same order and uh, not graded. They are within uh, the DaVinci YRGB color manage, but they are not graded. What uh, we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna go to my timelines and um, I'm gonna have my graded here and my cut down here. The cut down is not graded. So I'm just gonna go to my cut down and I'm gonna right click on the cut down here and go to timeline and go to color trace. Uh, I'm going to color trace from timeline. So I'm just like going to arrive to a page where I have my local database and in my local database in guest, I'm having like all the projects that I have on the computer. So uh, what I want to do is taking the project where I am in. So this, this is this one. And what I'm going to take would be my uh, graded timeline over here. So I hit grade it and continue. And so then like I'm going to have a um, window where uh, actually DaVinci will uh, propose me the grade uh, in function of my clips. So I can click on it and uh, it's going to uh, just tell me with which uh, clip from the graded timeline is going to associate this clip. So um, when it's all green, like we are lucky actually, because when it's all green, DaVinci uh, is sure about his choice. I would just suggest to click just in case to verify, but I know that this first clip is this one. I know that this second clip is this one. I know that like this third clip is this one. I know the fourth clip is this one. I know this fifth clip is this one. I know the sixth clip is this one and I know that the seventh clip is this one. Uh, but sometimes um, it happened to me before, uh, DaVinci will have a dot and uh, will just um, highlight in blue uh, the, the current clip that he has a dot. So when it has a doubt, uh, when you're going to click on your blue um, thumbnail, you're going to have like one uh, clip uh, that is suggesting and another clip that is uh, suggesting and so you will have to choose between these two so then like DaVinci would uh, copy and paste automatically uh, the grade so right now everything is good uh, and I am good with everything so I'm just gonna copy grade and exit 
and so up when it's copied if i double click on my uh, timeline cut down uh, now i have my grade that is uh, coming in so i can go in my cut down timeline in color page and all the graded like all the grade we've done uh, on the main timeline uh, appear here so we are pretty good guys <laughs> so uh, this is my last tip uh, for uh, going faster when you grade and uh, better uh, I hope this helped and uh, you're gonna have fun uh, actually matching your clips and uh, going as fast as possible uh, to finish your project um, you can go fast huh? uh, but uh, be meticulous so um, yeah I hope it helped and um, I see you next week guys if you have any suggestions just put it in the comment I would love to read it